when I was growing up, I would watch kids die of malaria. We lost so many children, brothers and sisters, and two other relatives. So my motivation all along has always been to study malaria and get to the depth of this particular disease. Each year there are between 350 and 500 million cases of malaria, killing between one and three million people, the majority of whom are young children in sub-Saharan Africa. In Kenya, we have 17 million cases of malaria reported annually. It is number one um, killer, particularly children under five years. Africa loses close to $12 billion in GDP just from malaria alone. I actually grew up in a place where there's a lot of malaria. I thought that by doing genetics, I would be able to understand this mechanism. Dr. Collins Uma was born and grew up in Kasumu on Lake Victoria in Kenya. After studying at Kenyatta University in Nairobi, he returned to Kasumu to study for a PhD at the Kenya Medical Research Institute, KEMRI, funded by the University of New Mexico. He also teaches at Maseno University in Kusumu, where he plans to set up a lab to further his work into the genetics of malaria with support from the Royal Society Pfizer Award. He has been with us for only two years. And within those two years, he has moved directly from being a lecturer to an associate professor. Collins is a young scholar. He's hardly 36 years old. And I found he had done tremendous work in research in infectious diseases, which are prevalent in Africa. When I was growing up, we thought that professors were supposed to be over 50 years of age. But now, I'm the youngest in all the public universities in Kenya. Dr. Uma and the team from Kemri work at the Siaya District Hospital collecting samples for his study and contributing to the welfare of children suffering from severe malaria anemia. In Western Kenya, every child gets malaria. About 20% of those children develop severe malarial anemia. And what we do is we say, once you get malaria, what is it genetically that governs whether you do well or alternatively have severe forms of the disease? And so the end game is to really try to understand what genes, gene pathways, and biological factors contribute to the development of this severe disease. So far, we have identified some molecules that are actually associated with severe malaria anemia, while we've also identified some that are actually protecting against it. The Pfizer Award is a great boost to my research career. Previously, I have been concentrating on single nucleotide polymorphisms in association with disease. Single nucleotide polymorphisms are DNA sequence variations that occur when a single nucleotide, A, T, C or G, in a genome sequence is altered. Dr. Uma's new research will extend his investigations into single nucleotide polymorphisms associated with severe malaria anemia by examining the immune regulatory genes for disease susceptibility to severe malaria anemia. Genetics is, in malaria is quite new. A lot is unknown. So what it's doing is really uh, creating new knowledge which is going to help also in the management of the disease. Dr. Collins' genetic studies will contribute a wealth of information on the risk factors that are associated with uh, severe malaria anemia. We could target these infants with vaccination or complement other interventions to protect them from death. Given that we do a lot of patient management and intervention procedures, our presence in the locality has really reduced morbidity and mortality by a great deal. Before we went to Sierra, for example, there were a lot of deaths, 22%. Uh, and within less than three years, we had actually reduced to around 2.4%. There used to be this coffin maker outside Sierra District Hospital who was really doing booming business because it was strategically located outside the gate. But with our presence and reduction in mortality, we got this guy out of business. So he's probably selling vegetables in the village. The problem with young universities such as ours is having good laboratories 
and the equipment within that laboratory. The fact that Dr. Uma got the Royal Society Fights for Award is extremely important because it builds intellectual infrastructure as well as capacity building. The Fights Award uh, will have two important areas to address in capacity building. I will train more people in immunogenetics. Then secondly, I plan to buy equipment for the laboratory at Masena University. And Collins is an excellent model because he's worked very hard, he's published high quality manuscripts, and that has positioned him now to go out and partner with additional institutions. Since this is a problem in Africa, I will set up a molecular biology lab specifically for training African scientists and this way we'll increase the number of scientists that can actually carry out effective research in infectious diseases. It is important for African scientists to be recognized by the Royal Society. It motivates them. It gives them the recognition they deserve. He becomes a role model. This is a great honor to me because it is actually an opening and an avenue to get further funding. Because when I set up a lab using the Pfizer Award, I don't just end there. I will need more funds to continue doing research in these infectious diseases. So the Pfizer Award has actually opened a big avenue for me to apply for bigger funds to carry out research in infectious diseases.